Hey guys, welcome back for yet another video, finally, two months after the first one. Now I'm actually done with my build and something is squeaking, yes, it will stop. So today I will head into the city, uh, I will eat some food and uh, talk to you about the, whoa, a big damn wasp right in my face. Uh, talk to you about this uh, trike that I've built and uh, my concept, my ideas behind this particular build because it's much more budget friendly than my previous builds and uh, I've used materials that can be sourced from any local hardware store or things like that so I have some features on this strike that I have not seen on anybody else's strike. I remembered back in 1989, I will never forget that day. It was the 9th of August. I was out riding my bike and I had a tailwind. I will never forget it. Because what's actually happening here is that I do have a tailwind today. So I'm using a minimal amount of assist. So I said in the first video, this is strictly assist. And I do have six, no, seven steps of assist, ranging from zero watts to 600 watts. And I do not use the torque sensor actually, because I can now decide exactly how much power I want to take out of the motor. And before you go all crazy and tell me that 600 watts is not allowed in the European Union, I can tell you that 250 watt rule that applies is something there are no e-bikes out there not even from the renowned manufacturers that do only have 250 watts all of them do a lot more than that especially the two big brands like you know the one start with an s and one with a b both of their motors produce over 600 watts so I'm pretty confident that I'm okay with telling you guys that I do have about 600 watts of maximum power. And that's something I have programmed into the controller. It, obviously the motor can provide a lot higher power than that, but if you're gonna make solar viable, actually useful, you cannot treat your e-bike like a moped or something because the amount of solar I have I planned it because I plan to pedal as well the motor is strictly there to assist me usually I use about 100 to 200 watts for cruising like this on flat roads there are no hills no nothing but if there are a big hill I just push the buttons down there and uh, then I have 600 watts. And I can tell you this much, it's not that powerful, not with all this weight. So today I'm fully loaded. <laughs> I mean, the trailer is packed with all the gear that I'm gonna be using for my tours. The aim with this build was to make it not rattle, nothing. I, My first build, everything was shaking, it was rattling, you, you, got, you got annoyed by that. but. With this special design I have made here, I do not hear anything except road noise and the surrounding nature. Tiny rear view mirrors. The only thing I need to do with them is to glue them in place because <laughs> they are moving. They do not stay put where I put them. So I'm gonna put on a dab of glue on there. Pretty nice landscape where I live. Not particularly hilly either, it's very flat. So, uh, the trailer back there, I hope you can see it. I don't know because I can see the little screen on the action camera. Uh, it turned out great too. It's very lightweight, it's very strong. You can disassemble it into Legos. And then you can pack it up and ship it together with the trike overseas. And there are two bags in line. I don't know if you can get them in frame. So the first one 
Closest to the trike is a 90 liter or 89 liter Ortlieb pannier bag. Not pannier, more like hockey trunk style. And the one behind it is a 49 liter. So it's protected with a cloth or a fabric that is very water resistant, dirt resistant, all of that. Oh no, there is clouds in the sky. Don't like, don't like. Look, clouds. Looks like it's going to be bad weather. Hmm. So the cycle analyst from Grand Technologies, you can have uh, three presets uh, that you can decide how the motor is going to behave and all of that and pedal assist and whatnot. So I have three of them pre-programmed. And my fastest one, it's the street legal one. It's, it's uh, capped to 25 kilometers per hour. And I really don't feel the need to go any faster than that, honestly. When you're in a trike like this, it does not invite to go fast. It invites you to chill and have a nice day. Just relax and take in the scenery. Second preset I use is for if I want to save energy, but I still want to move. Then I put in the 20 km per hour speed limit. Because if it's flat and all of that, I can pretty easily pedal this myself. And if I drop below 20, the motor kicks in and give me a boost up to 20 again. And then I can maintain my speed just by pedaling. That way I can effectively charge the battery while use it and use the motor when it's really needed. I don't do that now. I have the 25 km per hour speed limit set. And the third preset is 15 km per hour for the exact same reasons as before. But I will use that if I'm really tired and really need to charge the battery or not use it. Then I can, then the motor will really kick in just to get me up to speed or help me climb. That way I can save a lot of energy just by reducing the top speed to 15 for assistance. The pinion gearbox is a dream. It's so nice that you can shift while stationary. And the simplicity of it, you do not have uh, any gear derailers and all of that. You just want to gear in the back. And by having the motor in the wheel, you put take a lot of stress out of the drivetrain. The trailer has the same size wheels, exactly the same kind of wheels, tires, I mean, like on the trike. So my idea is, they are functioning as a rolling pair of uh, spare tires. So when the front tires on the trike are done for, I can just switch them out and put them on the trailer and take the trailer's tires and put on the trike. And then I have a, because the trailer's tires are going to last, are going to last a lot, lot longer than the trike's tires. And they, the trike's tires will be good enough, will have a second life right on the trailer instead oh man this weather is so nice finally I have some good weather on my vacation last year's vacation was <laughs> so if you're wondering if i'm using a tilting system i can tell you this much i'm not in my honest opinion the way i use my trike you know, all of this i don't feel it's that important to collect every bit of sunshine that is possible by tilting the panels during travel but when I'm stationary I have a system in place that makes it extremely easy to take the panels off and just lean them up against the trailer and the trike. That part is not completely done yet because I actually have two new panels that I'm waiting for. Eric Tennant in the US has used these All Powers SF200 panels and I have two of those on order. That will bring my total to 400 watts instead of 320 as I have now. I do not need the extra 80 watts, but the thing is with those two panels, they are wider and they are shorter. If you have a look at the panel now, it's shaded, partially shaded. And by replacing these panels with shorter ones, the risk of the, this panel above me shadowing the one behind is less because I'm going to be having it mounted as far back as the trailer's panel is now. 
That means that the front end of the panel will not be shaded by the roof. And it being wider, it will actually cover the wheels as well on the trailer, which means uh, I do not need to add additional fenders because water spray, if it's raining, will spray straight up onto the panels and uh, that way they will get dirty and uh, not function as well. By having a wider panel, it will act as fenders. I have to think things this you have to think these things through. That was hard to say. And by also reducing the amount of uh, length on the panels on the tri trike, it will also aid in the quest of not shadowing the rear panel. For me, it's much more important than tilting panels that the structure is rigid and can support the panels well. Because if you're going to start introducing tilting, you need a much stronger foundation, you need the mechanism for that. Oh, I actually love the smell. Two stroke. The tilting mechanisms, all of that introduces complexity, introduces points of failure. So mine my aim with this build was to build as lightweight and strong as possible for flat panels. So if you have a look here at the inside of my panel holder, this is just double-sided, uh, what is it called? Polycarbonated. I think you call it coroplast or something in the US. I use that as a backing for the panels. And this black thing here is just like a squishy thing that the, the whole panel is laying on top of it. So it's like a shock absorber. So it takes out all of the vibrations because vibrations is something that kills solar panels. And it's just hold together with a, down with a O-ring. And uh, probably gonna get questions or comments that's gonna break. Yes, I think so too. So that's why I keep spares of them and keep a close eye on them. But that also makes it very easy to take the panel, whole panel off. I have those rubber gaskets or whatever they are called in English all over the place. So if I push on the panel here, you can, ah, it's hard to demonstrate, but it's squishy. But best thing is it makes it silent. You can't hear the panels rattling. A fresh haircut, some food. I'm gonna be pedaling home and then I'm gonna be off the bike and showing you some stuff. Yes, this is the end of the ride. It was a short one. In all honesty, I don't feel too good today. It's only 41.4 kilometers or 40.4 volts. This is the amount of watt hours I've been consuming. 445 watt hours and 10.5 uh, watt hours per kilometer. That's not particularly economical, especially not for me. I usually am um, around four to six waters per kilometer, but I used a lot of assistance today because I don't feel that good. Let's have a look at how many waters we have produced with the solar panels. Normally I, uh, I do have one of those shunts in the solar farm way, but there's something up with my solar shunt. So I'm using a separate, um, device to check this so have a look at this it's uh, now charging with 190 watts and that's with the panels completely flat and we have collected 438 watt hours so almost the identical number to what we have used today that's pretty good then remember i used a lot of assistance today so i'm oh, oh it's peaking 200 and so over 200 watts yeah and that's not with the panels angled either, just flat. It's, I don't see the reason why it's angling all the time. It's a mess back here, but uh, it's the way it is. I'm gonna be having a cover over the battery. It sits there on the rack. And uh, center of gravity isn't that high because it's only 20 inch wheels. It, it's, it sits fine there. Below this amp meter, watt meter, I have a 
DC DC converter that converts the 36 volt battery to 12 volt. Jenna's on charge controller with a specific voltage of 41 volts instead of 42. The same goes for the other one under the trailer's solar panels. All of the framing material is aluminium. And then I had to make these braces because it was way too wobbly without them. So I just used the existing mounting point on the rack holder there and angled to aluminium beams, rods. So it, now it's very, very stable. You can rock this, it won't move. The same for the rear post. Also had to use aluminium rods. In the left bag here I have the card cigarette lighter charger thing. So I can charge all of my equipment like the drone, phone, power banks and whatnot. Well, this is not pretty but it's functional. It's a three-way connector that goes directly to the battery and the BMS inside this big black box which is going to be looking a lot better later. So one of those three connections goes to the DC-DC converter. The other one goes to the motor controller, which is situated here. And the third one goes to the solar panels. So they are all in parallel. So these are T connections for aluminium or steel bars. 25 millimeters to an inch, no problem. And uh, no welding, it's only them. Then we have two more aluminium rods to distribute the push and pull force from the trailer to the trike. And here's a close up of the hinge. And here's my solution. I'm gonna <laughs> fix this so you see. It's fraying there. Um, so this is 90 liter bag up front and a 25 here. No, sorry, 49 and 89 to be exact. And they're just suspended in the same pole as the solar panels are mounted to. And they are also resting on two big uh, plates out made out of polycarbonate. So it's very lightweight. You can dismantle the, this whole thing, put it in a box. So in all four corners I have this O-ring solution. And just do it like this and then it's off. It seems to be holding up fine. I'm gonna be refining this so there, there is no sharp edges that can cut the o-ring. But the o-ring is high quality and it will not snap easily. Oh, I don't feel too good. Um, I'm gonna be... If you have any questions please leave them in the comment section. Give me ideas for future videos. Uh, if you have any suggestion on videos you can post them as well uh, leave a thumbs up and a subscription that would mean a lot to me share this video if you find it informative the whole point of this channel is to be informative and uh, disclose everything have a good one see you later bye